So in previous lectures, we talked about the uh, sum of a bunch of random variables. Okay, so we derive some stuff, like we derive what is the expected value of this sum, what is the variance of this sum, but you know, this Sn itself is itself a random variable. And as such, it has some underlying uh, PDF, right? This is the PDF of the sum. So what I want to talk about in this short lesson is what is that PDF? Okay, we should be able to compute it. Now, in general, this is going to be a little bit hairy to compute. So let me start with something simpler. Okay, and in, in the first part, we're not going to assume anything about the random variables' relations with each other. We're just going to say I've got two random variables, x plus y. And I want to know, well, I mean, I know that the average of, or the, the mean of z is just the mean of the two things add together, right? But what is the PDF? Okay, well, let's go back to how we derive PDFs from first principles. Okay, that's like saying the PDF I can derive from the CDF, capital F. That's the probability that Z is less than or equal to some number, which is, in my case, the probability that X plus Y is less than some number. As soon as I do this, I'm immediately in the world where I can use the joint PDF of X and Y to compute this number, right? So let's think about this. This is like saying I have uh, x and y, and I want the sum of those things to be less than or equal to z. So this is the line here, uh, x plus y is less than or equal to little z, right? So it's like little z over here and little z over here, and I've got this event in the joint PDF, right? So now I can say, okay, this probability that x plus y is less than or equal to this little z is the integral over this shaded region of the joint PDF. Well, let's think about the best way to do this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to integrate down the kind of uh, columns of this. So here, that's like saying that x ranges from minus infinity to infinity. That's the dx part. y ranges from minus infinity all the way up to this number, and this number is z minus whatever x value I have, and then I have f of xy, xy, dy, dx, okay? And then my PDF, right, would be the derivative, ddz, of the CDF, right? So what would happen if I took the derivative of this with respect to z? Well, that's like saying that I would have the inner integral. This part would hop into the y area. So that's like saying, by the fundamental theorem of calculus, it's like saying this. I substitute y for this, z minus x dx. Okay. Now, without knowing anything more about the joint PDF of x and y, that's where I can stop. Okay. Now, one thing that I could um, note is that if x and y were independent, then I could decouple the joint PDF into the x and y pieces, right? So um, if x and y are independent, remember what that means is that the joint PDF is the product of the oops, individual PDFs, right? And therefore, the PDF of Z is this integral. I'm just going to separate out like this. Okay. So now that I've, I've simplified things a little bit, and for those of you that are like electrical engineers and have taken like a signals and systems course, this is where you stop and say, oh man, this is exactly a convolution integral, right? the much hated convolution integral. This is actually like saying I have the convolution of the two PDFs, right? Um, I mean, this is kind of a little bit slangy, right? I mean, because what is y here, right? But this is basically like I convolve the two things and I get um, the overall um, PDF of z, right? We're not going to do a lot of examples like this in this class. So I'm not going to dwell on it too much, but only to say that, uh oh, this is a convolution. So that should also set off some warning bells in your mind saying, well, if I have a convolution in the kind of uh, 
time domain, then there must be like a frequency domain version of this, right? And so it's true that you can start to simplify things involving sums of random variables uh, when you consider the Fourier transform of the PDF, right? So I'm not going to talk about this too much in these lessons, but just to say that, you know, these kinds of problems are simplified using what are called characteristic functions. which is a fancy word of saying, basically like Fourier transforms of the PDFs. Okay, and like I said, I don't want to talk about this too much, right? Basically, just to give you a shorthand, we define the Fourier transform as the expected value of this function of a random variable, right? Where j is the imaginary square root of minus one, and so this is like an integral that looks like this, e to the j omega x dx, right? And if you know Fourier transforms, you see this is kind of like what we define the Fourier transform to be. I mean, there may be a minus sign here if we're talking about the Fourier Fourier transform, and there are, minus, there are 1 over 2 pi factors around there. But fundamentally, this is like the Fourier transform of the PDF. And the implication then is that whereas before I had a convolution of two PDFs in the time domain, now I could say that things might be easier if I look at the product of characteristic functions in the frequency domain and then take the inverse Fourier transform, right? So, you know, you can get as far into this as you like in terms of, you know, now you've got all these imaginary numbers floating around, you've got tables of Fourier transforms. To me, that gets a little bit off the beaten track of what probability is about. So this is all I'm going to say about it, but it gives you a, a sense of how far you could go down this road and it does help simplify these things where you've got lots of random variables that you need to do some sort of a convolution in one domain, you make it a product in the other domain. So you can always read more about that if you've got a probability textbook.